love you and I would never, never do anything to hurt you, okay? Okay? All right. Corey, I'm excited to talk to you about Esme, my love. Uh, I watched it today, matter of fact, and oh my gosh, it, it kept me on the edge of my seat because oh, there's so many twists and turns going on with it. And you would think it's just a bonding film, but then it just gets really strange. And there's some great shots in the film as well. I mean, overall, this is a great film. Uh, thank you. That means a lot to me. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, you know, uh, we had a really amazing festival run, but we had it at a time when we're just coming out of COVID. And so festivals themselves, it was just very, you know, it, they, they were exciting, but it was like, our festival is going to keep happening. Like, will people come? And so only a few hundred people have ever seen this film so far. And so I'm extremely excited that Terror Films uh, nationally is going to be doing our digital release, um, you know, on Tubi and Amazon to bring it to a wider audience on June 2nd. And I'm very excited that Glasshouse Films will be taking it internationally because, you know, it's been a, from inception till now, it's been over six years. And we're just so excited and, and, and ready for people to see what we've been cooking this long. That's awesome. Well, I know that you were credited with the story. So where did the idea for the film, how did, how did you come about that? How did it all start? So, so uh, I worked with a script writing partner, uh, Laura Allen, who actually wrote the screenplay. And then I added uh, edits to it. But I came to her with a lot of bullet points and ideas and very specific things that we were going to do. Um, I had been looking for a writing partner for a long time because I knew I wanted to tell the story of a relationship between a mother and a daughter. So one thing, first and foremost, it's very important that I be working with a partner who is a woman um, because uh, that's a very special, unique relationship. And while just a parent-child relationship is also special and unique, there's something very, very just different about the mother-daughter relationship. So it was very important that I work with a woman there. Um, and Laura was amazing. But the inspiration for the film really comes from two different places. The first is something that will just kind of like, it stuck with me for many years, actually way before I started thinking about this film. A woman told me this story. And when she explained to me the story, I was like, that's absolutely horrifying. And she told me the story about um, when she had just had her daughter. Pardon me, I'm just adjusting the microphone. When she had just had her daughter, and um, daughter's now a toddler. And, you know, it's not, it's not uncommon for her, for her to, like, run down the hall or walk down the hall in the night and say, you know, how are you doing, Mommy? This time... Um, She's walking down the hall. Somebody's following her. Somebody who uh, they've never seen before. And, you know, for me, as a new father, relatively new father, I've got a five-year-old and a soon-to-be two-year-old. I'm just, I tense up and I'm like, wow, that's terrifying. And she goes, no, this was actually the most beautiful and amazing experience in my life because that person was an angel. And I said, what? And she said, I was filled with the most incredible feeling I've ever had. And um, I was like, this sounds so horrifying. And she's like, well, you know, for me, this is the most pivotal, beautiful one, maybe the most, one of the most pivotal, beautiful experiences of my life. So I just had this feeling where this thing that she described to me just sounded so scary, but to her was the most beautiful thing. And the fact that one event can be experienced so differently right i i'm sure um it, it really just kind of stuck with me and just kind of what is seeing an angel what is seeing god what is that right just that whole thing and then meeting somebody and then just like well this is when i met god you know or uh, this is when i met god's messenger or whatever you know that's intense and that stuck with me for a very long time um and then the other kind of kernel is uh there is a up in upstate New York, there's a town called Hague, New York, and it's on the border of uh, Vermont and New York. It's in the New York side. And there is a family, the DeLorme family, that has a 
old abandoned dairy farm. It, it's, it's no longer an active dairy farm. But um, the town historian there is Sally, and she has two sisters, Sherry and Susan. And Sally uh, and Sherry and Susan had a great, great either aunt or grandmother named Hannah. And Hannah uh, had a, uh, a St. Christopher's medal in her personal affects. And so we were shooting a music video up in this town and I get to talking to Sally and like, this place is incredible. And she's like, oh, well, I can tell you a lot. I'm the town historian. I'm like, oh. And so after speaking with Sally for a couple hours, I was like, oh my gosh, there's just so much here. I love the space. I love her family. I got to come back. Um, the, the drummer of the band, that was his mother. And um, so I come back a few years later and I'm like, you know, I really want to film something here sometime. And I learn more about the family. And we incorporated much of the DeLarm family history and lore into our characters is it a one-to-one -one ratio is like hannah based on hannah no but is that same christopher's medal in the movie actually over 100 years old yes it's from hannah were those things in that box is like actual hannah's things like her glasses and her this and that yes so there is the farmhouse the family farmhouse yes is that dairy cap actually the delorme family dairy cap yes so we kind of mix that experience with the angel and the DeLarm family history and lore. And those were the two kernels for the film. And then Laura and I went out to the property and um, we spent the night there at uh, Sherry's house and we talked and we walked around and we saw the different places. And we really, we, I already knew a lot of the story that I wanted to tell, but then Laura the script writer, she really brought it specifically to that space. And we wrote to the space rather than trying to shove the space into our movie. We wrote our movie to our space. And I think that's, that was one of the really just fortunate things we had uh, the, the ability to do that really, um, you know, if people say, wow, that really seems like it should be there. It's like, yeah, because we wrote it because it, we wrote to it, you know, we, we wrote to a living space that was its own character. Um, and, you know, you know, to, the movie only has two actresses, obviously, uh, yeah. but the space itself is alive. And, and, and there we go. Yeah. The one thing the, you mentioned, the whole angel thing, that's what I really liked about the film. Cause you had that juxtaposition between Hannah seeing the angel and yet Esme is seeing practically the devil in a way you could say, because when you see the messed up, when she sees what she thinks is her mom and then she turns around and got that face. Like it's, it's basically seeing an angel and a devil in the, at the same time. I think that's, that's one of the visuals I absolutely loved, especially when they oh, both, I'm so glad you especially when they both hug each other and then they, they both see their, you know, their different. It's, you know, the different yeah. Stuff. It's this duality, right? It's this duality. Yeah. And, and, and that's the magical realism there, you know, and you'll notice that, you know, each character only sees one they don't see both right that's that's what i really like that's what i really like and then i will say one of one of my favorite visuals was when hannah is um break trying to break the stick and they had the shot of the double mirror i had to i actually had to rewind it twice because it came up so fast that i thought it was a ghost face <laughs> and then i paused and i realized it was hannah's face from a different angle but it was so well shot that it looked like it scared the crap out of me at first because it looked like a go like from an angle, it looked like a ghost face. It had the eyes and the like open mouth, like the. And I was just like, "Wait a minute, did that just happen?" I had to, like so I so I saw as I rewound the, the screen, I'm like, "Oh, that's just her." I was like, "That's her face." For but that visual was just that just hit me like hard, and that that was an amazing shot right there. Thank you, uh, my cinematographer Fletcher Wolf. She's she's absolutely one of a kind. And it was such, it was so amazing working with her. Um, so yeah, and just the whole team, you know, a filmmaker is only good, as good as their team. And I happened to spend a really, part of what took me so long was uh, making sure I was assembling the right team. Yeah, exactly. And then speaking of the cast, like you said, you just had two actresses in it and they were phenomenal. I mean, hands down. I mean, they both brought that mother-daughter quality to the film. The chemistry was fantastic between them. 
And then, you know, as it del if it delves deeper into the story, it started to remind me of The Shining. You know, the mother starts to go a little crazy. And, you know, I'm thinking what's going to happen to the girl at one point. And, like, I kept thinking of all these different theories. As I'm going through the film, this is why I like the film. I like a film that engages me so much that I have to come up with what I kind of tend to come up with. Maybe this is what's going to happen. This is, you know, it, it, that's what I like. I like a movie that gives a good story where it's going to keep you guessing about what really happened. And that's what I really loved about it. But Stacy, I'm, I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm so glad that you said that. I, I really hope that people are going to want to watch the movie twice to pick up more. Yeah. Um, but it seems like you probably, it's funny, this film on the, on the festival circuit, uh, was very divisive. It was really two camps. Um, There's nobody who felt middle road about this film. There are people who absolutely loved it, and there are people who just hated the film. And I think it's the people who wanted to just sit back and be entertained and not have to be engaged with the film. Right. And then they just felt frustrated and overwhelmed. But then people who were engaged with the film and actively like solving the mystery, everybody, everybody who solved the mystery really really did like the film and that was very gratifying to see um and then there were some folks there that that wanted to they they were pretty sure that they solved it but they had to watch it again to make sure absolutely and then they they found other things it, it is a very fun movie in that we do throw easter eggs throughout the whole film and on second watch you, you might you you might be surprised uh to 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 see or hear some things that you didn't realize were there uh, to begin with, uh, quick question: Did you watch on headphones or did you watch with speakers? I watched it. Um, I have a, I have, a, I had the app on my t, my actual smart TV, so I actually watched it on there. <laughs> so on okay. my Roku, so I was able to I was, on my Roku. So I, ha I actually had the app on there where the screener was. That's so all I was able to, you know. That's why, that's why I said when I saw the double mirror shot, I had got to rewind it. I'm like, wait a minute, what just happened? Was that like a ghost face I just saw, not realizing it was. And his face from a different angle, but it, it but um, Fletch did a good job with that shot. I mean, it just like it comes out of nowhere, and that it, it, it's like it lasted one second. That's why I had like I had to pause. I'm like, is that like so? so that... One thing that's <laughs> yeah, yeah is, that, is that that makes me really happy. One thing that you'll find, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, so I won't go too much into it. But one thing that you'll find if you listen with a really good sound system, or like in a theater, or with headphones, is we actually threw out the film, um, recorded the actresses calling each other's names, and throughout the film, you'll you'll hear peppered throughout the actors calling to each other maybe their mouths are not moving but you'll hear esme calling to hannah or hannah calling to to esme or hannah saying you know calling to herself but you'll you'll hear these whispers throughout the film um in several places so there's little easter eggs like that um where on second watch you're like oh there there that is so we we try to leave some things for the viewers there that'll be really fun on second oh that's awesome watch that's awesome. So what was what uh, Audrey and Stacy were great in the film. I mean, they brought this really great dynamic and chemistry. I mean, well, so what was it like working with them? Like, did they get to bond during in between takes? Did they, you know, did they bond before production so they can get the chemistry right? Because it this it, it was so natural between the two of them. Um, Stacy is an incredible actress, and Audrey really, you know, when we filmed, when she auditioned, she was either just turned nine or maybe she was eight years old when she auditioned and when we filmed she was nine years old i mean she is an incredible actress and one thing that audrey does or did you know when you work with a child actor who's young enough um, you're not just working with the child you're working with her acting coach as well and her acting coach happened to be her mom heidi and they are a very effective team um you know she's a very precocious child or was a very, very precocious child. It's like she could read really well. She could memorize things. She could, but she was a child and it's important to remember that. So like between takes, yeah, she had her favorite stuff, unicorn or her little stuff, you know, like stuff swan or whatever and playing games. And like, sometimes she, she would ever, and you don't, you don't say I'm going to do this. We're going to do this. Despite that you say, well, no, we're going to incorporate. That's part of it. You know, you, 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 you engage, your actress where she's at and um stacy really helped with that um 
she's like, we're going on this journey together. You know, not only is not only are these characters going on a journey, but me and you, we're we're going on a journey. We're gonna we're gonna be out here doing this film together, and we're so I do think there was a good amount of bonding there. Um, but I, I think it's a real testament to not just Audrey and Stacy, but also to Heidi, uh, Audrey's mother, who could help, you know, sometimes uh, the script might've been a little uh, hard to interpret for Audrey maybe, but she was able in like two sentences, like this is what's going on. And then I'll just say, oh, that's what's going on. Okay, let's go. Um, and it didn't happen much, but like Heidi was there to help translate to Audrey she didn't have to translate from Audrey too much because Audrey's a very good communicator. But I think sometimes uh, our intentions were not as clear. And uh, I think that's where Heidi really stepped in. And, and, and I mean, she's just, she's a very, very talented woman in her, in, in her own right and has many, many different talents. Um, but um, that was one of them was, is was kind of like, she was there to make sure Audrey's performance was good to make sure Audrey was safe to make sure Audrey was happy like it's a lot of work being not only a acting coach a tutor a you know all this and then also a mom right so I think one thing that was kind of fun was like sometimes if Stacy was a little tentative Heidi would be like, listen, I'm her mom. You just get in there and you, this is what a mom would do. And like, you know, because, and, 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 you know, that would be really helpful. She's like, you know, you got a kid, you throw them around, you, you, you know, there's a lot of like physical contact because when they're little, you know, you're just, you're diapering them up. You know, I think one thing that's really uh, to Stacy's just shows her breath is she's not a mother. Um, and she learned that empathy uh and, and portrayed that empathy so well just so so well and i yeah. think being able to interact with um during the audition process but also being able to in interact with heidi was probably very helpful that's awesome yeah it, exactly i mean because she felt it felt natural like i said it felt natural like she felt like an actual mother but now hearing that she wasn't i mean that's just mind-blowing on its own but that's what made it work i mean the, the chemistry between those phenomenal even when it things get intense between them and you know hannah starts to slowly lose her mind a bit and you know there's audrey yelling you know mom mom and you know it that still brought the chemistry together like in terms of you know them trying to keep that relationship going despite the madness yeah. that ensues yeah yeah mo mother daughter relationships are intense they're very unique um you know there's a lot of uh just a lot of intensity in there um, and in this relationship, there's a whole lot of love, but there's also, it's also very fraught. Yeah, exactly. So you, um, you mentioned you shot this film up at the farm. Was there any other difficulties that you faced during production in terms of maybe um, setting or, you know, trying to get a, a scene done and it just didn't work out? Like, did you face any of that? Because I know a lot of indie producers always juggle through yeah. you know, and, and, and go through the grinder, but eventually they do, they do find a way. They always find a plan B to <laughs> To well, I was, I was really uh, cocky. I was like, I've planned this out so well. I've got such a great team. It's going to be amazing. You know, uh, we had a $90,000 shooting budget, which is very, very low. We had 13 days of principal photography. So we had to get everything, almost everything done in 13 days. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of room for things to go wrong. And of course, you get on set and then everything goes wrong. Uh, I'll just give you a small <laughs> example. Um, the last day of filming, we're doing the water scene. And uh, we, uh, our, my, our, my UPM crystal had found us this space, this island that we all took the whole crew out to on a boat. We had it for the day. But it's one of those situations where we're going to get it that day and we're never going to get it again. We get out there with the whole crew, all the equipment, and the underwater housing breaks, doesn't work. Oh, and I was just like, so say that again. And um, so I'm stomping out in the woods swearing and, and just yelling and swearing. And then I hear, oh, no, I'm like, what happened now? And 
one of our crew members has dropped her phone into the into the water and i was like oh man just this is just insult to enter i'm so sorry that happened and she goes oh don't worry it's the new iphone it's it's waterproof and then i said wait what did you say <laughs> it's waterproof i was like give me your phone so we, we went in there and um we shot some of the underwater shots actually on her iPhone, just, just a few shots. Um, yeah. We ended up having to schedule a, a reshoot day, but just having the ability to film, like we, we did all this surface level work. We, we did everything we could, but it was still, it just, did, you know, that we had that expectation that we would be able to, and it's just like the winds had been knocked out of our sails. So the ability to come back and, and actually film, it was just such a reinvigorating moment where everybody's like okay we're back on we're gonna do this and um yeah uh another and, example is the picture car the engine cut and i had to get the shot for the opening of the scene where the car drives by the camera yeah uh, it was also hitting right on overtime so i had to let the whole crew go because we're out of time and my cinematographer director photography fletcher she's like you know what i'll do you this favor i'll stay out couple hours but I, you cannot ask my crew to come because they you know my camera team to come with me because you know they we're, we, we don't have the budget for overtime so we got to release them so uh here I'll, I'll come out with you and so <laughs> we we have the car the andrew cuts out i'm at and i'm just like what are we gonna do we push it i it's i get behind the wheel the actress had to be wrapped as well so i get behind the wheel it's rolling down a hill. The battery's still good, but the engine's dead. So the power steering's out. The, the headlights are on. And I'm just rolling down the hill, trying so hard to make that curve. Oh and then God. thinking, oh, no, I've got to get this thing into the grass because we can't just leave it on the road, like, at the end of it. But we got the shot. Um, but then the car was done. And it and we had a uh, one of the guys there was pretty handy with mechanics and everything. And he was just like, look short of getting a new engine this car is toast and we still had things to do with that car yeah. and so my my art department one of our pickup days is they had to find the exact same car with the same interior choices and that is not an easy thing to do and mad props to my art department of two there's kyra baselli the production designer she was amazing and uh, one of the amazing things she did was bring on Jackie Lalo and he was a set decorator and he took over. She couldn't make it to the, the, um, the pickup days that we were able to schedule, but he came in and he found that car. Wow. <laughs> and, and that was not an easy thing to find. That's amazing. I mean, and my, the fact that it was a $90,000 budget is why I'm blown because it felt like uh, it felt like you're watching a movie that could have had a budget of at least a million dollars, right? Like the way that everything was shot. Oh, yeah. But to find out that one used an iPhone for certain shots, and two the whole car bit. I mean, that's just insane. But <laughs> I, but I I think the angel from the movie is at was actually looking down on you and saying, "You're gonna get this movie done." <laughs> we, we got we got really we got really 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 lucky. Yeah, it was a ninety thousand dollars shooting budget, thirteen days to do it. Um, and, you know, most of the effects are practical. Um, so most of what you see actually happened, al almost all of it, including some of the, the like, more intense uh, special effects makeup. Yeah. And that's a big testament to Stacy because at some point she had to walk around for, like, eight hours with no face. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, that was, that, like, I, that was going to be my next question. She, that, that... She, she, she was blind. She had to be led around by the AD, and there's a lot of trust involved in there. Yeah, exactly. You don't want her knocking into something with that. With that, face there's on. a lot of there's a lot of trust, and she had to move, and she had to act, and she had no face, and yeah. so she put a lot of trust in us there, and and she also um, worked harder. She put in the work for that role. She really did both of them. But Stacy, uh, especially with that, really put in the work there, and uh, she was in it to win it, and I, I think it really came through. Um, I was really proud that when she won Best Actress at the at the Something Wicked Festival, um, that was just a moment where I was like, Stacy, you've really earned this, and it, it made us feel real good.
Yeah, the way the way she performed the movie, she definitely deserved that award. That's that, that's for sure. So that that felt, I, I think that's a very well deserved uh, uh, award for her, and I'm really really happy she won that. That's awesome. Well, with that said, um, now that this is gonna be coming out on June second, what's next for you that you can talk about? So I'm I'm really happy uh, it's coming out on June second. If you want to see the film, you go to www.esmaymylove.com, and I'll have all the links for you on June second. So you'll go to Tubi or Amazon or Apple or Google Play. That's where you'll be able to see the film. Um, if you want a DVD or a Blu-ray. Uh, You'll be able to order it with a donation to the website, and I will personally be burning them one at a time for anyone who actually wants a physical one because there's just something for me. I like to have physical copies of my film sometimes. Yeah. Like when it when it's a, when it's one that that matters to me. So like when there's a movie that really matters to me, I'm like I need that DVD, I need that Blu-ray. I'm gonna go get it. Exactly. And, uh, so I want I want to give that ability to people. So it will be literally me burning them. So. My distribution rights to terror films is for digital streaming, and I've retained my personal DVD and Blu-ray rights uh, because I wanted to make sure that option was there for people there. So oh, in awesome. terms of projects that are coming next, um, I'm very excited. A short audio drama that I've developed has been accepted in Tribeca Festival. So um, right after the film comes out the next week, we'll be playing in Tribeca. Um, and then I have a, uh, a horror sci-fi podcast, narrative podcast that uh, I have in development. I'm very excited to direct. Oh, that's amazing. I can't, I can't wait for those. That, that They sound really good. So with that said, Thanks. as my love, we'll be out on January, uh, June 2nd, excuse me. And uh, like Corey said, check out www.esmemylove.com. And for those physical media fans like myself, because I have a whole ton of them, um, you know, make a donation, and if you want that DVD or Blu-ray, but also you'll be able to check it out on digital. So, Corey, thank you so much again for taking the time to talk about this film, and I hope people do get to see it over and over again just to get everything because this was a great film, and I absolutely loved it. I will tell you that. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. Well, you all oh. have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank you.